what do you really love about this industry? What do you love about doing what you do? Um, I love the um, community. Uh, I think it's great. I, I love that I can, I mean, we've just been, me and Stephen, my business partner, we've just been to B-Sides Bratislava. Yeah, still it's that. the first ever event yeah. that they've done. Um, the organizers were like super nervous about it. We got there, the sponsors had dropped out. And I mean, we we basically funded the bar, but it was just like, everyone just chips in and it's just really relaxed and cool. everyone's happy to help each other. Um, when people give a talk at something like that, they genuinely want people in the audience to understand and ask questions and learn from it. And I think we've shifted away from this, this knowledge is mine, to sharing knowledge creates a safer infrastructure to do business. Mm. And that's really nice. And there's a not a lot of industries that are like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, there used to be, I mean, I certainly remember not that long ago, I would, I would work with people that didn't want to share knowledge because it was like, this is how I keep my job. But now it's so widely known that there's not enough people in the industry. Everyone's happy to just like share the knowledge. And let's face it, if I tell you something that I know, it doesn't drop out of the back of my head and I lose it, mm. right? Um, so yeah, I really like the community feel of it. Um, and I would definitely consider myself a lifelong learner. So every day I come across things that I don't know and I'm not ashamed to say, I don't know. Um, and it gives me an opportunity to like log on to a new platform and learn about something completely new and mm. then I can add that to my remit, you know. It's fixing problems, I've, I gather that that's the bit you really like as well, just being faced with this problem and being able to figure it out and break it down to its component parts as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think that's quite common, isn't it, in yeah. the industry? Like, yeah. people love breaking things and people love fixing things and then they go into even one of these yeah. two sides of the industry, which is amazing and yeah. really interesting. What do you hate about the industry? What do you not like? What? Oh, um, <laughs> I don't like the rivalry between red and blue mm. um, because we need both to secure anything. Um, I don't like that I can go into a company that's got their internal red team and internal blue team and they are completely opposite sides of the building or in different offices entirely. They don't really get along. They never have meetings together they're in competition with each other. Mm. Um, that breeds breeds insecurity mm. because they they need to those those two groups need critical to critical to the, they, the security culture. And if you don't have the communication yeah, there, it's, they've got they're working mm. for the same fucking company. They work they're on mm. the same team. Like why do they argue with each other? Why do they hate each other? It happens all the time. Um, you can go to events and people say, oh, what would you consider yourself, more red or blue? And I'll say, well, instant response mainly, so blue. And they're like, mm -hmm. mm. you just think, go away. Mm. <laughs> so, but equally, like, got it, yeah. yeah, you. I mean, equally, you've, you've got issues as well with um, people being too scared in this industry to admit when they don't know something, mm. um, which is such a shame because, like, the, the best thing about this industry is people help each other out. So... You know, I know of like pen testers and, and blue teamers that will just say, oh, yeah, 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 I get it. And then you'll say, what what about that? Didn't you get? Oh, I got it all. Like, explain to me what I said. And they can't. And you just mm. think, well, actually, we would have, this all would have happened so much quicker if we just spoke. And that's where yeah. purple team, and in my mind, is like the saving grace for this. Because I think one of the things that makes a really good security organization, and I've seen it in the past, is making sure that you're asking the right questions. Yeah. Constantly thinking, uh, you know, not assume nothing. Assume nothing. Assume that it's all broken. <laughs> like, and, and and just keep asking questions like, you know, and putting different scenarios and coming up with different approaches to think, yeah. are we, honestly, is what really matters to our organisation really secure? And and I think sometimes we get so buried in it and so in the weeds that we just sort of forget some of the basics as well. I mean, I don't know. Oh, well, I think like, you're a lot further forward in security if you if you concentrate on the basics mm. um, and add on the fancy bits later. <laughs> Seriously. What do you define as fancy bits? What, what, what do you mean by fancy bits? Um, if you patch, for example, great. But deploying like a fancy EDR tool to tell you when some processes has run on a computer, mm -hmm. okay, that's great. Do that later. If you've got nothing in place, do that later. That class that as a fancy bit. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. If you patch that system, do that first. Yeah. So people will put like endpoint protection 
on a system that's fundamentally insecure anyway. Why? Mm. Like, unless you need to, like, I don't, I'm trying to say unless you need to be political, unless you need to leave that unpatched. Um, I don't know. I mm. just, I think there's so many really basic things that we could be doing and time after time you'll go somewhere and they'll have Windows XP running. And then they say, we're going to deploy Dark Trace. But yeah, say, this is it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly what we see. You know, we're having some conversations about what we consider to be really fundamental, basic things around security. And yet they've spent six or seven figures on this really fancy mm. deployment over here. And like, fancy bit. Look, get that bit right first and yeah. then think about that stuff. Yeah, right? yeah. Mm. I think I think I like, actually UBA is I mean Dark Trace is brilliant. I really like the tool, but mm. I think UBA is an excellent example of fancy bits. Mm. I just think patching and update updating patching, um having some um visibility on your network, making yeah. sure you know what you've got, auditing your own network, making sure you've got um eyes on what you actually own, mm. where in the world it is, is is really valuable. Yeah. And yeah, I think most enterprises still no, struggle. I don't think a lot of the time things. they do. Mm. Why is that? Why do you think that is? What, what is what's, um, I just think they're just lost. Or you mean like um, what, you know what, what struggle knowing what they own? Yeah. Oh, I think that's quite. There's so many layers to that, but yeah. a lot. I've seen some really big. I've worked in some really big enterprises that they'll have. Um, say a tool that's owned by HR mm. and it's kind of been spun up mm. and it's been sat there since 2008 and not used because they tried it and they actually preferred a different thing and it's still there and you find it and no one that's like in any technological field within the company knows that it's there. Mm. It's not it's like, like a lack of ownership almost over yeah. what's actually there. Yeah. yeah. It's like they've mm. got the go ahead to test this tool out. They've said to someone somewhere in IT or networking, can you just load this up for us? Yeah, okay. And then it's just forgotten about. And it's take it, it takes some serious energy to to find what's on your network and find whether or not mm. you need it. And is are you gonna be brave and turn it off? Yeah, it's quite unfortunate. I think companies are getting better at that though. You do? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and I do think that's where the scaremongering has a silver lining. Mm. <laughs> because yeah. Yeah. Because in you know, I think our obviously our background has very much been around helping organizations figure out where their sensitive data is, who's got access to it, and, and kind of what's happening to it. Yeah. And, and I know that, you know, the level of security you're in is, is, a, is, is very, very different in some ways from what we're talking about here. But just we find there's a massive lack of visibility, a massive lack of understanding over yeah. where, you know, their most sensitive data is within their organizations, who's got access to it, what they're actually doing with it. And I don't, I don't understand this. <laughs> a lot of places don't actually understand what their crown jewels are. This is right. Good point. Um, so <laughs> you can, I mean, so me and Stephen, we've we've spoken to um, a company in the past um, and we asked them about their crown jewels and they told us about um, these, I don't even like the terminology crown jewels actually. <laughs> it reminds me of like a 90s insult for balls. <laughs> sorry, like, yeah. <laughs> not the crown jewel. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, sorry. Um, so yeah, we've spoken to this this one company and they were really like, yeah, we want to work with you guys, blah, 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 blah. Um, and they, we asked them what their crown jewels were and they said, oh, these databases have got PII data in, PCI data, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. that's right, that's mm -hmm. right. Um, but what about your industrial control systems, which this company mm -hmm. relies on? They're like, oh, oh, we won't really class those as crown jewels. Mm. You think, okay, but if they just stopped, mm. your business loses like millions Zip. of pounds a day, right? Zip. And um, and in the end, they didn't end up working with us. Um, but I think they wanted us to go in and say, mm. okay, yeah, we'll we'll look at your server that's got PII and look mm. at your database that's got PCI on it. And is that is the data not all that? It's surely the data is all that matters, isn't it? Or like the information is all that matters. Um, is that naive? Then no, I don't think the information is all that matters. If okay. you're, if you're a, I mean, it certainly matters. Mm. But if you're a company that, um, if you're a manufacturing company and your industrial control systems go down on your manufacturing site, you can no longer produce what you need to produce. True, true. So, mm. um, if you're a pharmaceuticals company and your factory gets compromised, mm. that's millions of pounds. An Understood. hour, yeah. right? 
Um, so they are your crown jewels. So I, to, I, I, see, I yeah. interpret crown jewels rather than being um, what's legally needs protecting PII, PCI and you know intellectual property and whatnot. They do need protecting. Sure. But what if, if that thing died, mm. your company goes down with it? Yeah. What is that? I see. Um, and that that is where we have really interesting conversations with companies that kind of go, we don't know. Mm. So you have to break apart what they're doing and say, okay, this truck leaves this site at this time to arrive in this country at this time. Is that an automated um, yeah, time? Yeah, what process is it that yeah. actually goes um, in? Yeah. And they say, you yeah. know, actually, yeah, um, they'll get an alert and then that's when they have to go. How does that alert come about? If that alert didn't come about and no trucks left for two days, so, how much yeah. money would you lose? Yeah. Um, you know, what would be the impact on national infrastructure? Would people be without medicine? Mm. How would that imp impact on the NHS? And how would that impact on lives? So there's um, there's a bigger, I think there's a bigger picture yeah, than, than, than just information. Yeah. But it is information, you know? Yeah. Uh, industrial control system is in instructions. Yeah.